Hello and welcome. I'm Samantha, owner of Get Some More Brand, and today I'm going to talk about what you need to know before you start up a website. Helping you understand basic terminology associated with website development, such as host providers, different plans, and domain names. Also, helping you understand the differences between the ways to build a website with Website Builder Host or WordPress and help you navigate what an e-commerce site or business site entails so that you can best choose what is right for you. I'm making this video only because I want to help you. I wish I knew all this information before I built mine and it would have saved me tons of time and confusion. So I wanna help you to avoid the mistakes I already learned and help bring clarity to some of this confusing process. I'm really excited to share this info with you. I even made some handmade charts, so please forgive the handwriting. So let's get started. First, you have to decide what type of website you need. If you want a website that shows services, has some contact info, email collection, maybe social icons or a blog, then to simplify things, we can call this a business website. You can build it with either Website Builder or WordPress. If you need a website to sell products directly on your site and collect credit card information, then you're going to need an e-commerce site. E-commerce sites are like an online store. Business websites and e-commerce websites can be built using either a website builder or WordPress. Let me give you more details about these. A website builder can be done fairly easily. It's like this, choosing a template for each page and just typing in what you want to say and putting an image in the box. Each page and section of a website builder uses pre-made templates that you have to choose from and just drop in the info that you want. You can still collect email and do blogs and so on, but you just use a template which is fairly simple for beginners. Website builders take less time to actually publish, and there's no configuring or codes to worry about. Honestly, you can probably build a website builder website in an afternoon, maybe two days if you're not sure about the content or images that you want. To build a WordPress website, you might spend a week trying to configure things and navigate how it works to finish and publish a site. There are advantages and disadvantages of each one, which is what I'm trying to explain in detail. Website builders are fairly limited in terms of being able to scale. They allow limited number of pages and amount of traffic your website can handle. Starting out this way is okay, but if you want to scale, then you would have to start over. WordPress is different, and I'll explain why. It's a little bit more complicated. WordPress is considered a content management system, CMS. You have more control because it's like this, a completely blank page. You can do anything you want with it. Literally, this is what you start with. To add things like email collection forms or e-commerce pages, you can use plugins. These plugins need to be configured, which involves coding on your WordPress site. They give you the codes. It's kind of like copy and paste, but figuring out exactly where and how is the challenge. WordPress allows you to add meta tags that verify that you own the website, which you cannot do on website builders. For instance, if you want to use Pinterest to run an ad for your website, you would need to verify that you own it by adding a code that Pinterest gives you to your WordPress site. If you have a website builder site, you cannot verify this because you cannot code in a regular website builder site. WordPress is also scalable, as we've mentioned before. So as your business grows, you can grow your site as needed with basically unlimited pages and options, and without WordPress, you are limited on pages and the amounts of traffic. WordPress also uses built-in and detailed SEO, search engine optimization, for each heading, image, and content, so that your stuff shows up better in search engines. Website builders are much more limited with SEO, and you have to add it where you can. I really hope that helped. Later in the video, I'm actually gonna show you the editing pages of my WordPress website and my website builder websites on my computer. So stick around. Okay, so with that little bit of info, hopefully you've decided on what type of website you want to build. So before you get creating, there's still some more terminology to understand. You're going to need a hosting provider, an annual or monthly payment plan, and a domain name and plan. If you're interested in making a website, I'm sure you've heard of many of these words and it probably made you even more confused, but let me help. The hosting site provides you with a place to sign in and has plans that you choose to pay for your website. It's where you choose and pay for your domain name. And this is most importantly, where you will create and edit your website and maybe get some technical help. 
You have several hosting providers to choose from, depending on your choice of website. Host for e-commerce site without WordPress, website builder only, you would choose something like Wix or Shopify. They have easy setup because they're website builders and there are limitations. For business style websites on a website builder without WordPress, you might choose Site123 or Squarespace. And for web hosts that have both website builders and WordPress hosting, you might choose GoDaddy, Bluehost, or HostGator. These are hosting sites, and there are many more. WordPress has its own site, at a .org, which is free to create your WordPress site. But without a host, you don't have the technical support. So if you choose to make a WordPress site, I still recommend using a hosting site. A word of caution, please listen up. If you are not sure if you want to deal with WordPress, but you think you can start with a website builder, then later on change your website builder to WordPress, then I'm going to caution you that the content you create in your website builder is not, I repeat, not transferable to WordPress. You can save images and write down your content, but there is no easy button to transfer your website. It must be done manually from scratch. So it is important to make your decision to use WordPress or website builders in the beginning. This literally happened to me exactly. And I wanna make sure that you guys do not make the same mistake to save you guys some time. Okay, so I told you I would show you my editing screens of my WordPress site and my website builder site so you can see the back office of the websites. Here we go. Okay, so I'll start with my WordPress site. I'm already logged in and this is my editor screen. This is the dashboard. I use GoDaddy as a host for my WordPress site, but again, you can choose a host that best suits you. I want to show you the plugins page. These are a few that I use for my website forms, email, and SEO. Again, these have to be configured, which is where you they give you codes and you add them into your code editor. Let me show you what that looks like now. I'm gonna go to my pages and we'll click on the home page here. All right. This is your visual editor. This is what it looks like when you're doing the visual editor. This is the code editor. It looks more intimidating than it actually is because they give you the code. You just have to copy and paste it into the right place in your code editor. All right, I'm gonna switch back to the visual editor here and go back to my dashboard. And I'll click on the about page show you guys how to add a section or block to your pages so you're going to see these little buttons on your page that look like this and you click on them to add a block blocks are like anything your options are almost unlimited here so you kind of have to have a good idea of what you want on your page before you get to this point or you might get a little overwhelmed with all of the options Now I'm gonna go back to the dashboard and click on my blog screen so you can really get an idea of the back office of WordPress here. This is what the screen looks like for me when I'm making the blog page. Um, this is not what it looks like to a visitor. So in order to see what it looks like to a visitor, you have to preview the page and see it looks considerably different there. So you can see how it's kind of more like a back office when you're working in WordPress. And over here on your dashboard, this is all your controls, your options for updates, um, analytics, and so on over here. So now I'm gonna to switch to my website builder websites here. I use site one, two, three for my website builder. This is my editing screen for one of my pages. Um, I already have this page set up um, and built, but it was built using a template. So let me show you how that works. Each section of my page is over here on a template. So I'll click on that and you can see the different types of templates. There's some with images, buttons, text, 
Um, you can do things like testimonials, email forms, images, text buttons, things like that, but you use a template that works best. Um, there's no code editor at all. And it's pretty much what you see as a visitor. So this is pretty much, you're working on the same screen, you know, as your visitors are gonna see. It's not a whole lot different. Like in WordPress, it looks considerably different to the visitor than it does to you. This one's a little bit less involved. So now you've seen the editing pages of my WordPress site and my website builder site so that you have a visual of all this info I've been trying to communicate to you guys. Again, I really hope this is helping you. I wish I knew all this in the beginning when I started my business. But let's move on to hosting plans. With that information, you will need to choose a payment plan. The prices of the plans are very similar for WordPress or website builders. The most standard is the annual plan. You pay for the whole year up front before you begin. You usually get a better deal on the annual plans. They end up being cheaper if you compare them to the monthly plan options. The host site might advertise $8 a month, but watch out, because that's usually only if you choose the annual plan and choose to pay for the whole year up front. Some hosting sites offer monthly plans where you can choose to pay month to month. Those typically run around $20 to $25 a month. And some hosting sites offer longer term plans like three year plans where you can pay for everything up front and not have to worry about it for a while. You just see what works best for your budget and compare the different plans on the different hosting sites. You decide what you need. Then you need to choose a domain name. Your hosting site will navigate you through this. A domain name is the actual name of your website, your URL, and what you type into the tab to get to your page. It is unique and specific. Not all domain names have a .com. As a matter of fact, .com domain names are more expensive and are becoming less important. At this point, you probably have some idea of what you want your domain name to be, but your host site will let you know exactly what is available and how much they each cost. For example, you might type in get some more for your preferred domain name. Your host site will generate different variations of available domain names and you pick, such as get some more 1012.com for $20 a year. Another option might be get some more 2.us for $10 a year. Another one might be get some more.life for $5 a year. This is my actual domain name, by the way. You choose the best option for you and you pay for it through your hosting site. Domain names almost always come in one-year plans, but they're much cheaper than the hosting plans, so it's not a big deal. Your domain name is unique to only you, so it's good to secure it when you can. Okay, so we've talked about whether you want a website builder or WordPress site. We discussed hosting sites and what you need to look for, and we've touched on the payment plans and how exactly you end up with your domain name. Now it's time to start creating. I hope I've helped clarify some confusing things that you really need to know before you create your own website. I hope I've helped you. If so, please subscribe to my channel. If you get frustrated, don't give up. You can contact me for help. If you still feel like creating a website is too overwhelming, don't worry. My business gets some more can build a website for you. I'm always happy to help. Thanks for watching.